Last week, Holly's problematic best friend, Gwyneth Paltrow, appeared on one of the biggest podcasts in the world. Call Her Daddy is hosted by Alex Cooper, who, I Googled this, she earns $20 million a year and she's the biggest female podcaster in the world and we need a pay rise. She's like a young <laughs> female Joe Rogan. She is. She is exactly It's right. really interesting because she used to host like a podcast with a girlfriend that used to be really just about sex, yeah. like very quite explicit. Then Spotify, that they – that her and the, not her romantic girlfriend but her business partner they had a falling out so then it became just her podcast spotify bought it and now she's become like an interview show yeah. whereas she's like the gen z female joe rogan yes not because she's right wing or anything or problematic but because the scale yeah is the scale so if you want to be cool and reach young women that's where you, you go, go on call her daddy her demographic is young, as you say. So let's say 20 to 35s, and clearly Gwyneth wanted to speak to them. She wanted to sell them some vibrators. Exactly. Um, but there's a particular snippet that's been doing the rounds and making its way into headlines that I wanted to interrogate with you both. In the interview, Cooper asked her about her exes, Brad Pitt and Ben Affleck, and here's a little of what she said. Who was better in bed? That is really hard because, like... Brad was like the sort of major chemistry love of your life kind of like at the time, you know? Mm -hmm. And then like Ben was like technically excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Pez, what does that mean, do you think? I think it means that she met, he made her orgasm clitorally. <laughs> is what I think. Or vaginally. <laughs> That's very specific. Do you think my, do you think technically excellent meant maybe vaginally orgasm? No, no, no. Because I, I don't think, think he a clitoral orgasm is as you don't have to be is as clitorally even a word. Yes. So I don't think I you think have to be as meant. proficient to give a woman a clitoral orgasm as you do perhaps a vaginal no, no. orgasm. I think that he was he he knew what buttons to push. Hmm. Technically. I think also given the context of the conversation, she wasn't gonna say anything bad about anybody and she just said that Brad Pitt was the best sex of her life well not of her life because yeah. her new husband wasn't included in this list but so she had to say something nice about him so I think so technically it was, it was in contrast she was like brad yeah. was passion first love oh my god and ben was technically excellent that was the context she compares the exes saying brad was a better dresser and more romantic whereas affleck was more likely to make her laugh and they had more arguments she said brad pitt was a better actor they also played fuck marry kill where Gwyneth said she'd marry Chris, she'd F Brad, and she'd kill Ben. Um, it was great compelling content, well done to all involved, but here's my question. Let's say John Mayer is the next guest on Call Her Daddy and Alex Cooper asks him to F marry kill his exes. So Taylor Swift, Jessica Simpson, Jennifer Aniston. Let's say, hypothetically, he describes Taylor Swift as technically excellent in bed and said he fought the most with Aniston, Let's say he killed Jessica Simpson, Mary Aniston and F. Taylor. I think we would all be horrified. When you have such a public profile, you, you're afforded such little privacy. And my question is, is it really appropriate to sit on a podcast and play games like oh this? Oh, my God. It Jessica feels Stevens. very exposing, <laughs> reductive. And it, I think reckon it changes how you see them. Holly, what do you think? I think that's the point. She wants you to change yes. how you see I her. I don't like it. Because? No, I, it changes how I see Ben, Aff ben Affleck and Brad oh, Pitt who yes. weren't in the room. I'm sorry, yes. So, But that's her story to tell. John I Mayer has been on Call Her Daddy and he did talk about his exes, but he has also learnt quite a lot of lessons mm -hmm. about not talking about his exes sexually in this explicit manner because famously he called Jessica Simpson sexual napalm we didn't like that. We didn't, and she really didn't like that. I thought that was a compliment, but I read her memoir recently, and oh, there's a lot of chapters about how upset she was about that. I still can't quite understand, but I think it's rooted in her religious upbringing. It changed know. her brand. It's, it changed yeah. her brand without and, her consent. And this is why I would argue it's not the same, right? Because the reason Jessica Simpson hated that is it sexualized her enormously, and suddenly people men are yelling at her in the street and everybody wants to because they're like they want to have sex with her because of her. so hang on a second when you say it sexualized her enormously i don't want to bring it back to pants again <laughs> but she also did say in her memoir she she wrote a lot about how from the time she signed her first deal her record company was sexualizing her she was sexualized in videos in photo shoots in in the whole way her brand was portrayed 
Totally. So I, I don't think it's fair. I, I don't think that's quite I right. I don't think she I had think a choice. She, yeah, I think there's a that. difference. I think there's she wasn't a Charlotte Shirt. She, no, she wasn't Charlotte. Char- Char- Sorry, I'll say, I could say again. She wasn't Charlotte yeah, Church. Sure, but it's still, I, I understand why she was upset about it. I think that it definitely takes that out of her hands and, and makes her into something that she doesn't want to be. Would That's you hate what... it if an ex of yours came out and said, Holly was an absolute demon no, I wouldn't in the hate sack? It. Oh. Would you just... <laughs> I'd hate it because what it does Would is you? it conjures up images in people's minds very kind of explicitly and my mm. family can hear that. Well, yeah, that's the yeah, other that's, that's the fair. other reason why yeah. Jessica Simpson hated it. She was like, it's but back to Gwyneth, right? I know you won't be surprised here, but I loved that interview so much because it was funny, it was irreverent, it was fresh. She starts it, and I've no, I don't listen to that show, right? So I don't really know. But what I do understand from the context of that conversation, so Gwyneth's there with her daughter. She brings Apple. And Apple says to Alex Cooper, go hard, roast her, ask her everything, right? And so Gwyneth's like showing off a bit to her daughter. She also says that her daughter, Apple, learned about sex from Alex Cooper, right? So the show has a sexual energy to it. Mm-hmm. That's how it's done. Started. that's in its dna because alex it, is very explicit yeah. about her own sex yeah. life if we're here we're talking we're going there i couldn't believe that she was asking gwyneth those questions i was dying i was loving it and dying at exactly the same time i was like you can't ask her that and i reckon she handled it when you actually listen as well as you possibly can because she didn't say anything mean about anybody she only gave compliments you know what I mean? So Holly. she made a big point of saying that she didn't want to kill any of them. You blah, know blah, so blah, much blah. better than this. It was all planned. Yeah, of course, but I loved it. I loved it. Oh, I did too, but it's not and, – and I felt the same way as you. I was like – I think she I handled can't... it as well as she could. No, but she knew every question that was no, coming. No, of course she did, but she still handled it as well as she could. Yes, because it, it was clearly – mutually beneficial yeah and so she wanted to come and talk to about her vibrators and about all the products she has on group in the last 10 minutes of this interview is an advertorial that. yep that's pretty much what it is just spawn con you got to get something to give you got to give something to get something so she obviously alex cooper and her producer were just like well we got to, if we're going to talk about vibrators let's talk about sex we'll talk about your career and stuff but how honest are you willing to be yeah. and i thought it was very interesting and strategic alex cooper is very good the way she seeded that at the beginning that apple said go yep, hard gave her permission gave her permission so no one can say hey, it was so inappropriate because she's made um apple a co-conspirator in that and she's now but what's wrong know, with that I no, think that's genius. It. I think all of it's genius. I'm just always interested in the behind the scenes yeah. of it all. So I think that. But what I also think is I don't think it's the same. I don't think it's the same as if it was a Brad Pitt being asked. I don't because I think it's still subversive, which is the whole point of that show, mm-hmm. for women to talk about sex that way, to be able to talk about pleasure that way, to be able to talk about how they've enjoyed sex. It's not the same culturally as men sitting around doing it. It's just not. Look, I agree with you to a certain extent. And also I would say that lots of men do. Howard Stern, for example, is an American DJ who has made an absolute killing and has the most enormous following and media empire on asking celebrities about their sex lives. And men are say awful shit on that And show. I hate it. And I always reckon when we're talking about like gender equality or sexist questions, the answer is to interrogate the nature of those questions rather than just to extend them to women as well so that they end up doing the same thing. It feels like a betrayal. If I had that kind of level of public scrutiny and interest in my sex life, and and you know what, maybe before this she spoke to them both and and gave them a heads up. Also, you've got to remember the context that all of the sex that she's talking about is more than twenty years ago. Like it's different. Yes. I could talk. I could talk now. I'm fifty one. I can talk now about my sex life in my 20s in a way that you couldn't two years afterwards. Do you know what I mean? She's she's literally talking about the men she slept with in the 90s. Aren't some things off limits? <laughs> like aren't some things... No, don't things call your daddy. I don't call her daddy. I when don't you think. go... When you've had sex with Brad Pitt, like these poor famous people that are just trying to have some private experiences and private relationships and then she's being interrogated and as you say, 20 years ago... Like, I, I just feel like it's a real betrayal and invasion she didn't of privacy. didn't actually give away anything. Do you know what I mean? That's why the skill was in this. Because Mia's right. It's very strategic. All she really said is that 
Brad is a great guy and he was a big love and he was good in bed and Ben was complicated. That is basically what she said. And I'm glad I married Chris because I got my beautiful children. Like none of that is controversial or anything that anyone doesn't already know. The only thing I think that would sting is that she said Brad was a better actor than Ben. Yeah, yeah he wouldn't like that. I think the rest of it, all of her exes would be pretty chuffed. And ultimately in the F marry kill game, she did say she'd kill Ben Affleck. That might hurt. Well, but she said 25 times beforehand, I don't want to kill any of them. I don't want to kill any of them. And Alex Cooper goes, okay, we're not really saying kill. You know what I mean? Like there's context to this. We don't just take it on I reckon she made Ben Affleck sound. I think she meant like, I would like to kill him. Sound a bit grumpy and like she had this big love with Brad and, you know, maybe um, Ben was was. good with his. Maybe he cheated on her. Who knows? I know, but even that, it's like, Mm. I don't want to know it. I I wanted to know every little bit of it. 